Hey what's up guys welcome back to my youtube channel and uh, today we are going to see something new okay so we are going to take a look at a new dart framework so this framework is especially for backend this is made by very good ventures who are very much popular for creating very good cli and some other tools as well so um, this is created by felix uh, you might be you know aware about felix because he has created the flutter block package so uh, this looks exciting because uh, it just came to stable 0.1.0 if I'm not wrong. So um, it, it has good speeds, lightweight and it's of, of course powered by Dart. So this is something which we are going to take a look at. And yeah, I'm right. So they announced stable 0.1.0 release. This is still a long way to go, but you know, I'm also very much new to this framework. So I just wanted to check it out. And uh, in the meantime, I also wanted you to see that how this particular thing works. So um, here, you, if you go to pub.dev, uh, here you can see we have this start frog package. And here uh, we can see how we can install this uh, particular um, uh, thing as a CLI and then how we can create a project, how we can run it. So all those sort of things. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'll open my terminal and uh, if I go back, you can see what I have to do. I have to uh, activate the Dart Flocks, Frog CLI. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll just go there and paste this command Dart Pub Global Activate Dart Frog CLI and uh, it will take some time, I'm sure, and uh, it will resolve all the dependencies. And once those are resolved, uh, you can see we have activated Dartflock CLI 0.1.1. Okay, so the current version which we are using is 0.1.1. Okay, now how we can create a project? You have to write Dartflock create my project, something like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I am going to some of my uh, specific repository, for example, Dart Dev. And here, after coming here, I can say, for example, if you see Dart Frog create and project name, okay. So what I'll do, I'll just say Dart Frog create, and I can create a normal project probably. Uh, let's say my app, my Dart app, something like this. I can name it anything, whatever I want, okay. So that's not a problem. Um, now once it is done, it will install all the dependencies which it might have, and once that is done. You can see we have something my dart app so if i see ls so i have my dart app over here so what i can do i can um, open it in vs code and i have this open in vs code now as you can see um, i have a lot of things over here so i'll just zoom it a little bit so as you can see on the right side we have something called uh, dart tool dart tool folder routes folder test folder and then in popspec.tml basically what i have done is like i have kind of created a folder out of it you won't see this inside a folder you will see them as a separate file but this is because of my settings so we have a popspec.tml analysis popspec.lock and all let's open popspec.tml so that we can see what kind of dependencies it is adding so as you can see we it is adding mocktail test and very good analysis and then uh, the main dependency is Dart Frog itself, which is 0.1.0. So I don't see like a lot of things happening over here. So um, it's it's good that it's almost um, like nothing. It's just a basic files probably I would say. And the main folder over here is routes where you will see all the routes. And inside that we have just one file, which is index.dart. And inside that, uh, whenever there is a request, it just gives a response that welcome to Dart Frog, something like that. So, okay, this looks cool, right? So um, what we can do in fact here is basically, uh, if you see this, then we can see how we can start our server. So we can just say dart frog dev. That means it will start the server. Okay, so let's try that also. So I'll go back to my code. I'm not doing much over here. So I'll open terminal here and I'll say dart frog dev. And you can see it is serving. It is uh, showing me the time also. For example, till now it has taken like six seconds. And now, so we can see this is where our debugger tools and all are available. And we have to just run it on localhost 8080. Okay, that's where our app lives. 
So if I copy this thing over here, and if I try to go to my Chrome, and if I paste this here, then I can see welcome to dart frog. Okay, let's me just zoom it a little bit. So welcome to dart Flo uh, frog, which is what I wanted actually, if you see, right? So uh, where it is written? So if you see index.dart, this is where it is written, okay? For example, um, if I want to change it, welcome to code per tutorials. If I save it, so hot reload is working actually, which is a cool thing. So if I, I don't, I won't restart the server, I'll just refresh the browser and let's see if this works. Oh, for perfect. So it says, welcome to code put tutorials. So, uh, I mean, uh, this, is, this is so good to be true. So, I mean, everything is working just fine. If we see the test inside test, we have another routes folder index test. So basically you can run your test and if it is a 200 and welcome to dart frog, then this test will be successful. But unfortunately we have changed the text. So let's see if we run this test now, will it work or not? So if I'm running this test, you will see that this test probably will fail. Okay. So this failed because, um, welcome to dart frog is not something which is there. Okay. Uh, rather we have welcome to code put tutorials. So that's the reason this test is failing, which is totally okay. Okay. I mean, if I change this with this, then probably it will work just fine. So I'll just change this. Okay, let's run this test again. And if, so these, these are my previous tests actually, which didn't work at that time. And that's why I'm getting this uh, error uh, still. So we can just ignore this particular thing. So this, this is working just fine. So um, coming back to um, other stuff, okay. So, all right, so uh, our test is working fine. Everything is working just fine. Uh, even the index dot uh, dart, if you see, we have just a simple request. Okay, what else we can do? Okay, so what we can do, we can create a sort of maybe a counter application or something like that. Okay, so let's start with creating. Um, so if you go to their website, they have a echo tutorial, which, which, which we can also do. So to do that echo tutorial, what we can do is basically um, we can create a dynamic route. Okay. For example, um, what I, I can do in the mess here itself, I will create a new file. I'll call it, let's say message. And I'm using this uh, brackets basically. Okay. So this bracket means that it's a dynamic route. Okay. So I'll just do this. So I have a message dot dart with this particular square brackets. And then what I'll do, um, I'll probably just copy this particular thing from here to here. Okay. And then, uh, context is same, but rather here I'll have a message also, which will be similar to the name of the, uh, file itself. So it's a message and rather than body, I'll just say uh, message. I think that should be fine. So, uh, I can like what I can do if I go back, uh, to my server. So I'll just rerun the server in fact, and let's in that case, let's see if everything works or not. Okay. So, uh, if I now go to this, welcome to code put tutorials working fine, but now I can add a message, for example, slash hello. So it will ping, uh, it will show me hello. So this is cool. For example, if I write slash pavan, so it will show pavan. So that's an echo application, which you can do, which is pretty generic and uh, pretty straightforward as well. So this was fun. Now let's see how we can create a counter application, right? Counter application is very popular uh, with Flutter, right? So everywhere you will see some sort of counter application. So rather than creating a new file, we will change this index.dart itself. Okay, so initially when you are uh, running your application, so um, like by default, you know, use you use index.dart. So that's, that's the reason why I'm using it. So um, now what I'm gonna do, um, so rather than saying welcome to code put tutorials, I'll probably say that uh, um, you have, okay, requested this route uh, one time, okay? So this is the message which I'm gonna display rather than showing that, you know, welcome to this and that. 
so now if i run it on localhost you have requested this route one time okay and then this one itself i can take it out for example i can just say count and count can be one and then i can replace this one with this count okay so now if let's let's change it to two in fact just to check if things are working okay so now if i'll go back if i uh, refresh it then you can see route two time uh, let's make it times and now if you will go back okay so if i refresh it two times right this is fine so now um this is our counter application this looks pretty much good so now what i will do we will see how we can create a sort of middleware here okay so um basically what will happen if you what is middleware actually so middleware if you will add a middleware so uh if like like for example you are making a request so before that before that request completes or um, or let's say if after a request is processed then uh, we can create a middleware for that okay to handle that case for example when you're making a request you want to do something when the request is processed before that so you can create a middleware for that so that's uh, sort of thing which we are uh, gonna do so uh, how we can do that is basically uh, we have to create a new file okay and um, uh, we can call it middleware itself whatever we want to call it so in the routes itself i'm gonna create a new file i'm gonna say underscore middleware dot dot okay so this is a global middleware okay so how we are specifying it uh, using this underscore and uh, it's it resides in the routes for a uh, directory okay so now what I'm gonna do, I will again import the same thing which I am importing dart frog slash dark frog dot dart. And this time you can create a middleware, okay? So uh, basically how you will create a middleware, you will just use this method middleware, okay? Middleware, uh, okay? So middleware will take a handler. This handler you will get with, uh, um, with this library itself and then it returns a handler itself okay so you can basically write, directly write handler something like this and because it's returning a handler so we will append this with a handler so this is all you have to write to create a middleware okay so basically this is not doing anything at all as of now so now um, how it will do something okay that's the question okay because now we have defined the middleware so uh, we have to do something with our count right which can be useful here in this case so what i want every time like for example every time you make a request so the route so like if you'll see index.dart we are just showing two two times right so rather than just showing it two times it should increase itself every time when you are making this request so what i'll do um i'll go back to my middleware okay and here I'll, I'll, I'll just have a global count itself and then by default i'll keep it as zero because this is how it will start right and rather than returning a handler what i can do i can just say handler dot and we have a lot of methods for example we have use we have context uh, context is not of our use to string okay so we will use this use method okay it will give us a handler okay and based on that handler you can basically do something okay so um how this will work so what i can do is here i can basically say plus plus count okay so uh, okay this this is the count okay so now if you see it is saying the return type int is not a future or response okay so uh, we have to match that so how we will do that right that is the biggest question right now so what we can do uh, we can just copy this particular thing we can uh, here we can use something called provider okay so provider gives us a context right and based on that context we can do something so uh, we can also specify the type for example it's a type of int because the count is int so we can leave it as blank also that's totally fine and because we don't have a we don't need any context as such and then i can just say plus plus count oh one second yeah 
okay so this means the same thing okay so this provider if you go inside you can see provide a value to the current handler by calling create lazily so this is what it is doing basically okay and this create is basically nothing but if you see this create is this particular um, kind of type def which we can see over here right so this is what it is doing right so um so uh, uh, and what we can do using this use we can have multiple layers of middlewares okay like you can create a chain out of it so that's a, a good thing which we can do now uh, we have the count over here so that cannot exist in the index also right because that then it makes no sense right so it's a simple like provider and uh, like like the, if you have uh, worked on provider library then you will get a context out of it so how we can access the con count from here okay so our count is in middleware so how we can access it here so when we are saying that const count right i'll change it to final first of all because now we, we are not defining it here now how i will get it i'll use uh, i'll use context over here again and then i can have a method called read and read will basically give me the count time but i'll have to specify uh, the type of it so it's a uh, integer so i'll specify that right and then uh, this should be this should be same okay so now uh, what what uh, so um, i think that's, that's all we have to do so i'll go back to my google chrome let's refresh it so you can see when i refreshed it it is one times okay uh, let's refresh it again now when i refresh it it's two times now let's refresh it again now it is three four five six seven eight nine ten so basically every time i refresh it it changes its value so that is the beauty of um, you know like creating this kind of middleware and you can basically you can um, um like save these values kind of store it locally and then you can use it to display right we can use various ways to um sort of you know like uh, deploy it you can deploy it to google cloud uh, you can deploy it to AWS, DigitalOcean, whatever. All these options are available. So this was a very basic example which we saw that how to work with Dart Frog for the first time just to check it out. And this looks really nice. Let me know your thoughts in the comments that what do you think about this particular framework which was created by Very Good Ventures. I personally liked it so far. And uh, if you are interested to know it more, to know um, more advanced stuff out of it, then let me know in the comments so that's it from this video guys i hope you enjoyed it if you did press the like button subscribe to the channel if you're new and uh, i'll see in the next video bye, bye take care and definitely check it out and give it a star on the github or probably give a like on pub.dev thanks for watching